Hey guys, welcome to our another series of the PyMega software part, the PyMega control software. This time we shall learn to control the movements of the humanoid itself. So let's begin. Click on the PyMega icon. You shall see a terminal screen and a GUI screen. Let me explain you about what these screens are. The terminal or the black screen is simple message or error notification from the background script running while we control the software using the GUI or the white screen. So let's proceed. This control software is divided into four frames. The left frame with four different sections, the PyMega diagram frame, the groups frame and the command frame. I shall start explaining the left frame and its sections first. The first section is a serial section consisting of the port values and the baud rate value. Please notice here the COM port value is the communication port between the PyMaker shield and the Raspberry Pi. Because I am using the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus variant and the connection is through the GPIO pins, I will write TTYS0 in the port value and press the open button. Now that my COM port is connected properly, the red label turned green and open changed to close button. If you are using a USB connection for the shield and the Pi 3 variant, then you must enter TTY USB 0, while for other variants then Raspberry Pi 3 Plus use the value TTY AM a0 as your COM port value. Now let's proceed to other section, the record section. In record section, there are four buttons, read, write, default position and all torque enable. The read button shall read the current position of all the motors connected to the shield and the red values are updated and displayed in the PyMeca diagrams position section. A successful read operation will return a message, read then successfully. See? While well, if any of the motor is not connected, then an error or a warning is displayed with the disconnected motor ID value. Now that the values are read, you can proceed to write them in a set of command. After you press the write button, the successful operation shall return a success message stating right done successfully and will lock the humanoid in that position. The humanoid will be locked in position so that the humanoid stays in a steady position and does not fall off, although you can unlock them. How? That I'll let you know in the next frame explanation. The default position button enables you to let PyMeca come back to its steady or default position. This defaults are values set by a user through programming to allow PyMeca stand to its native position every time. This can be changed anytime from the backend. The All Talk Disable button here is to simply disable the locked position of PyMeca or enable the PyMeca into the locked position. Please be cautious before you click this because if your humanoid is not in a steady position, it might fall on the surface it is standing upon. So this was about the record section. Next we have the group section. Now with this section, the group name frame and command frame are related. Let me first guide you on what exactly this group is all about. You've learned to read and write command or positions for PyMeca in the record section. But what to do when you want to add a set of commands or a group? This is where you create a block, a set or simply a group of commands to let your PyMeca play those commands for you. You can add a group by pressing the add button of the group section. Do remember not to use the same name for two groups. Once added, you shall see the name displayed 
in the group name frame on the right side. Now to add the block of your commands to the group created, see the command section. Press add button to add a command. The latest command added would be the positions set in the PyMaker diagram. You can now change the positions of the motor and press read. From the record section, press add again to enter the command for the new position. Likewise, you can add a number of set of commands for PyMaker to play. Now coming back to other three buttons and, the, and explaining their functionalities from the group section. The delete button is to simply delete the selected group from the group name list. This will also remove the set of commands from the command frame. The import and export buttons are used to import code text file where you have already stored those commands while export button enables you to create a text file of the commands added in the command frame. The command section has three more buttons. The delete button deletes any selected line of commands. Insert button allows you to insert the last read values above the selected line while modify button will open a box of the selected command positions displayed against the motor so that you can modify and update the positions. Once you update, press save and you're done. The loop check here is to let your commands play in an infinite loop until you press stop. Now coming to the center frame. We will learn about the servo sections of the humanoid body frame. Each motor in this diagram has individual four sections. First, the ID. Second, the torque enable or disable checkbox. Third, the motor position between 0 to 1000. And the fourth is the time elapse value required from moving one position to another. Moving on, this was about the control software. Next up, you see a camera button on the top. This feature is available when you have your camera enabled and connected with Raspberry Pi. You can take pictures and videos and even see them in the gallery. The gallery would be stored in the PyMaker directory itself. If the camera is not attached, it would label an error warning as camera not enabled. The close button is to simply exit this application. So this was all about the PyMaker control software. I hope both the tutorials will help you play along with the PyMaker and get easy and hands on with it. Thanks for watching.